Hello everyone, it's Leon here and welcome to this week's PS4 O'Clock. Now somebody last week asked if we could have a look at some free-to-play games on PS4, so that's exactly what we're doing. There are four games in total. There is War Thunder, DC Universe Online, Warframe and Blacklight Retribution. Now these games are all completely free, but there are in-game transactions, um, in-game currencies, things you can buy within them, but essentially you can download and play the game and get the experience essentially without dropping any money on it. Now first up is War Thunder, which is probably the one for you if you have plenty of time to invest and you really like planes. It's an aircraft combat simulator, it's got some arcadey modes in it, but it is quite sort of bound by realism, so there's a very long loading, uh, reloading if you use up your ammo in the plane. Um, if you crash your planes you get sent back to the hangar, you don't get to fit, even finish a match. There's a lot of sort of researching and unlocking and training of, of crews and plane parts in order to um, progress. But if you do like sort of flight sims, it's it's quite interesting to fly into a battle and have sort of thirty odd planes zooming around you. Um, but it's it's very dry. It's very serious, very technical kind of uh, game. So you've got to sort of really want to do that sort of thing. In terms of its kind of its purchases and the things you can spend money on, it basically has uh, golden eagles, which are sort of in-game currency, and they're what you use to buy premium things. And premium things will be things like uh, planes crew development, uh, hangar slots, more reserve aeroplanes and so forth. Um, and you can spend anything from sort of £16, which gets you a, a particular plane, it gets you a premium account for two weeks, and a premium account boosts your XP and your money um, earned while you're playing. Um, and that also gets you 2,000 Golden Eagles, so that's a 16 99 bundle. There's a, there's a range of bundles that go all the way up to things like £76, which will buy you 20,000 Golden Eagles, which will probably buy you more planes than you could ever possibly want. Um, but as I say, it's, it's quite dry, quite serious. It's it's not one for sort of fast fast action, pick up and play kind of stuff. Okay, next up is DC Universe Online, which will probably be familiar to anyone that's played the PS3 version because it's largely identical. There's not much of a, a visual upgrade or, or any great change really since the PS3 version. Um, this is the most sort of traditional MMO style uh, of the free-to-play game. So it's a lot of um, collecting magic pants and you know upgrading your gear. That's quite addictive, I do quite like sort of collecting um, costume parts basically that give you different attributes and your character can kind of change as you, as you get new stuff. Um, but there is a lot of that sort of go and do ten things in this place kind of missions. Um, so the one playing behind me, you have to sort of open ten vortices to, to let demons out. Um, but there's, a, there's a load of content in there for essentially no money if you don't want to pay for it at all. You can play as a hero or as a villain, you can choose different mentors, so you can have Batman um, as a mentor, you can have Lex Luthor as a mentor. All of these um, characters have their own sort of mission paths, they, they affect the game in different ways, so you can replay it over and over again as different sort of characters, different sort of mentors, and you know, if you want to build a superhero, it's, it's pretty good fun. It's very cartoony, it's not anything like, say, Arkham Origins or uh, Chris Nolan films, it's a very cartoony kind of um, experience. One thing I would advise is you play player versus environment, so PvE, not PvP, because uh, one of my characters in it is in a PvP uh, server, and I am largely being destroyed at all times by high-level characters just hanging around low-level mission areas and just beating people up, which is infuriating. It's not a great deal of fun. Um, the way you spend money on that, so you have things like um, 3 dollars will buy, buy you 500 marketplace cash units. Um, and they can be used to buy sort of outfits, um, different sort of things for your character, different uh, ability upgrades. You can also buy uh, membership packs, so you can uh, subscribe essentially. So you could have a 30-day membership for 9.99. That gets you access to all the DLC uh, and gets you a bit of in-game money. It goes up to things like a 180-day membership, um, which is a 54.99. And again, that's DLC. Um, that also gets you sort of additional powers, weapons, missions, and some PvP legend characters. So you can play actually as famous people. Uh, in the game. As I say, it's largely identical to the PS3 version, so if you've already played it, you know what you're going to get. So it's, it's a very loud, very sort of cartoony kind of uh, take on, on superheroes, but the MMO elements are well done. You, you do get drawn into collecting stuff, you do get drawn into that next upgrade, that next level up. Um, it's a very entertaining experience for, for no money. Next up we have uh, Blacklight Retribution, which is probably the most immediately mainstream uh, of the free-to-play offerings. It's a, it's a first-person shooter, multiplayer uh, shooter, so death matches, capture the flags, that sort of uh, very traditional kind of setup. It does have one interesting idea where it has this um, visor which 
has a short charge but lets you see everyone in the level. So you very quickly get into a pattern of like walking around, flipping the visor, scanning for some enemies, and then sort of making your plans according to, to what you see. Um, it's it's not say as impactful say as, as Battlefield or something like that. The guns feel a little bit weak, they don't have a lot of impact behind them. Um, but the, the gameplay is fairly fast, the visor is a quite interesting idea. In terms of monetization, this uses something called Z-Coins. So Z-Coins buy you things that you could earn by leveling up, um, but Z-Coins will let you get them you know, without the grinding, basically. So you're only sort of advancing your progress by spending money, you're not sort of buying things that you couldn't otherwise get. Um, another interesting thing it does is that it lets you buy items, um, even sort of animations and decals and things like that, you can buy them for a day or permanently. So a gun might cost you 20 Z-Coins for a day to try it out, if you like it, or you can spend 200 Z-Coins and then you'll own it forever. The way the, uh, the money sort of works on that is that um, you can buy 500 coins for £4.25, for example, so that will get you maybe a gun and probably not, not a lot else. Um, but if you want to go the full whack, you can uh, spend up to 84 99 and that will get you 2,000 Z-Coins, which will you know, keep you full of war for, for a long time. Um, it's like I say, it's a very immediate, very instantly sort of rewarding. It doesn't have the scale, say something like Battlefield. It doesn't even have the sort of the impact of something like Killzone's guns. But for a free free game and free shooter, it's it's a really good prospect. It's really good fun. And lastly, that brings us to Warframe, which is my, my personal favourite, even though I'm not entirely 100% sure what's going on. It's a four-player co-op shooter. You basically take on kind of raid and sort of defence mode missions. It's procedurally generated, which is interesting because it means it sort of makes up the levels each time you play, which can cause a few problems. I've got lost a few times, um, sometimes the level layout isn't particularly clear, but it does sort of, you know, keep fresh content coming, even if there is a sort of a hint of deja vu to it. I mean, one, one of the things I do like about it is it's got this sort of lovely kind of art style. I don't think I've seen a sci-fi game that, that looks like it does. It's very sort of organic, very kind of elaborate and ornate kind of buildings and weapons. Um, you know, some of, the, some of the guns look like sculptures. On the downside, it's, um, it's a little tricky to get stuff, if you like. You basically, the, there's two kind of currencies in the game. There's credits and there's platinum. Credits will buy you things like blueprints and pay to make those blueprints, whereas platinum will buy you finished objects. But you don't seem to sort of really earn any platinum in the game. I've certainly not earned any yet. And in terms of credits, you can spend a couple of days earning enough credits to buy some blueprints, and then you have to spend another couple of days earning enough credits to then make the thing that you want, say a, a sword or a gun or some armor, and that then can take 12 hours. Um, it also doesn't tell you when you buy blueprints whether you've got what you need to make it. It tells you what you need to make it, but it doesn't tell you if you've got those items. So I've got a gun I can't make because I've not got all the, the requisite components. In terms of the, the monetization, you can buy 75 platinum for 385, um, and that will not get you a lot. Most of the sort of the guns and the armor start at around um, about 200, 225 platinum. So even if you go up to 769 for 170 platinum, that still won't get you sort of a, a basic unit of equipment. So you're looking at basically dropping sort of 2299 to get 570 platinum, um, and then that will buy you probably some armor and, and a gun. So you know 20 25 quid is still cheaper than the game. Um, you can also get it, like I say, if you if you just grind and earn the money and buy the blueprints, but it will take you a long time. Um, it is also very very impenetrable. Um, when you first start playing it. There's no sort of instruction, there's no really nothing to tell you what you're doing, so you have to basically just kind of press buttons, go into the menus, try banging things together, see what works. Um, for example, there's a wall run in there that's never explained how to do it, um, and I eventually found it by going into the, the options menus to see the button layout, and you have to basically click the stick to dash and then hold the jump button after you press the jump, and then you'll do a wall run. But there are some levels that require it, so you can get stuck because it never tells you how to do a wall run, but suddenly there's a level where you can't progress until you do a wall run. Um, so you've got to really sort of have some patience, be sort of ready for a, a long slog, but it's a, it's a lovely looking game and it's got sort of a hint of that kind of Borderlands chasing a better gun kind of thing, where you're always sort of hoping the next thing's going to be exciting or interesting. So it just depends on whether you want to pay for it or take the time to earn it. So those are the, the four main offerings. War Thunder is a very 
dry, very serious, plain sim that uh, you'll have to invest a lot of time in and you really take seriously to get the best out of. DC Universe Online is a very sort of brash, loud, cartoony superhero game, but it does that sort of leveling up, um, level chasing kind of mechanic beautifully. It's, it's really kind of draws you into it. Blacklight Retribution is a good solid shooter. It could benefit from having some better sort of gun feedback. It's a little lightweight on the weapons, um, but it's still it's a solid shooter and for no money you can't really complain. And then Warframe, which is my, my favourite, even though, as I say, I'm still confused most of the time about what's going on, but it, it looks lovely. It's an interesting universe. Uh, it's not a sort of a world I've seen before, and, you know, I'm drawn to trying to get that better suit of armour, trying to get that next sort of weapon upgrade or, or ability upgrade. Um, so there you go. Those are the four free-to-play games on the PS4. If you've got any suggestions for what you'd like to see covered next week, leave a comment, and I shall see you then.